She's a Jar by Wilco. The song can hit you like a ton of bricks if you listen to the lyrics. Especially that last line. Um, anyway, hi guys. Uh, gonna do some Skies of Arcadia for you. Gonna resume from where we were last night. And we're gonna have a good time. You know, I'm going to uh, buy candy for each and every member of the audience. That's right. There will be a box outside your house, 9 a.m. tomorrow, full of delicious yellow and black candy. Oh, wait, no, 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 those are bees. All right, well, if you're okay with bees, I'll send those too. Hmm. Oh, you're welcome, Buckmatic. Glad I could, uh, Introduce you to a song. So, last time on Skies of Arcadia, some shit happened. Alright, there's your recap. And here we go. Give me a second, guys. I'll be right with you. I gotta find my controller. In my fragile family tree Watch me floating inches above The people under me So, uh, I want to, um, just say I, I'm really not one who's qualified to say, you know, something like this, but I'm gonna just do it. Uh, rest in peace, Robin Williams. You will be missed. He was certainly one of my, um, inspirations, in a way. And... The dude suffered from depression and addiction. I mean, I'm sure you've read this a thousand times and heard it a thousand times, but I just wanted to say something for myself. Sorry to bring up these things, but um, it, it has to be done. He will be missed. It's weird because, you know, everyone feels like they know a celebrity. You know, when you watch someone's movies or you listen to them or you just kind of watch whatever they do, interviews, anything, you, you feel like you get to know these people. And that's kind of a dangerous thing in a way. Um, because it can get a little crazy and people get obsessive. And um, some people can't handle that. I have no idea if that's what bothered Robin Williams. Probably not. But I feel that way with some people. You know, like I've... Like Monty Python... There's a lot of musicians and, and band members that I know, like, a ton about. But then you realize, like, they don't know anything about you. And it's kind of sad. I felt like Robin Williams was my friend, in a way. And, and that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. He was a very personable guy. He was a funny guy. He, he was in Louis. He was in... Whose Line Is It Anyway? I mean, he was in so many movies that I grew up with. And I really 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 am sad about what happened so Robin Williams once again if it means anything some jabroni on the internet saying so I, I, I wish you peace from your illnesses and your depression wherever you may be <sighs> all right So, anyway, uh, Skies of Arcadia, let's get into it. So this island was destroyed by Valua. They, they came and fucked it up and stole the crystals. It was shit. Vice, I really think you should start comforting your crew. They all look pretty miserable. Especially Fina, she's been in our meeting room for a, a long time now. You should go check, check up on her. Ash, 
you, Bum Bum. There's hardly anything left. What should we do? Let's start with the debris. Throw everything we can't use over the side and start working with what's left. The important thing is that everyone is safe. If we all work together, we can do it. Absolutely. Brabham and I built this place from scratch by ourselves. If everyone helps out, we'll have this place looking as good as new in a jiffy. Great, I'll start talking... Uh, great, I'm starting to talk like Brabham. No, the frame rate was screwing around for a second. It's frustrating. It took us so long to build our base and the Armada burned it to the ground in a few minutes. We'll all help rebuild our base. We already built it once before. The second time should be even easier. Hey, Kirala, here's your chance to show everyone the finest in Yafatoman craftsmanship. This was just a minor setback. Don't let it get you down. Ha, <laughs> sure thing. Thanks, Captain, for cheering me up. All right, listen up, everyone. We're going to rebuild this base, and I'm going to work you really hard, but it will be worth it, okay? Hey, the purple chickens lived. I'm so scared. What are we supposed to do if the Armada attacks us again? I wish Enrique was here. I know he would keep me safe. Moegi, you're safe now. That's what matters most. I had to give up the crystals in order to save everyone, but we're all okay. I'll do everything I can to protect the lives of my crew. You were right, Vice. I am sorry. I was just so worried about Enrique. He's out there by himself. I will be brave for you, for your crew, and Enrique. Now imagine being... Like, imagine living in fear of, of a fucking armada. That's why we, we need to destroy them. Uh, why? Everything we worked for so, so hard is gone. We'll just have to rebuild our base. We did it before we could do it again. The most important thing is that no one got seriously hurt. If we all give Ismail a hand, I'm sure we'll have this base up in no time. I'm sure Ismail sees this as a chance to improve on the old one. Yeah, you're right. Everyone is okay. I guess we can rebuild our base. I'm gonna do my best. I might learn a few things from Ismail, too. It sucks. You know, you get so far in a game and then someone just takes the crystals. How many times has that happened? Uh-huh. Yes. It's me. I came by to see if you're okay. Oh, Vice. I'm sorry, but... Could I just be alone for a while? Fina. I understand if you still need to work things out. I'll be back later. Fina, don't give up, okay? <sighs> Elders. Was Ramirez speaking the truth? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to believe? Alright, everyone. Lift on three, okay? As soon as we get this rubble out of the way, we can start building again. I can't wait. Hey, I'm a guest here. Wow, why am I stuck doing this kind of work? Ah, quit your griping. This reminds me of Lower City. What are you talking about? Everyone is safe. We should be happy that no one was seriously hurt. It's the only girl voice I do, and it's not even a girl voice. It's just overly a it's bubbly person. Nothing lasts forever. That's why we build new stuff. In my prime, I would have rebuilt half the island already. Look at that chicken spazzing out. It's like that farming simulator yesterday. They're too quick. Someone cast a spell or something. Ah, 
Ouch! I'm so tired. Maybe my life is better now than it ever was. Remember, all you need is friends. <sighs> Admirals, the five crystals are now in our possession. The day of our domination over the world is drawing near. My lord, if you will excuse me, I must go to the, f the place of which we spoke and finish the final preparations. Wow, Calcian, I'm impressed. You destroyed Vice's base and retrieved the crystals. Sounds like it's all under control. I'll be at my ship awaiting further orders. What is the matter, Beleza? You look like you have something on your mind. Share it with me. <sighs> Admiral Gaussian, please reconsider. If we call down the reins of destruction, so many innocent lives will be lost. Please, we don't need to raise the Soltis, or raise Soltis, rather. Beleza, will you betray me as Gregorio did? No, I have no intention of ever betraying you, my lord. Because I... Good. I do not wish to fight an unnecessary battle. As long as Valua does not resist, there should be no reason to use the reins of destruction. Admiral Galsian, what should I do? I do not see Alfonso anywhere. He is probably on his way to inform Her Majesty of my betrayal. Beletza, I want you to return to the Imperial Palace and remind the Empress of my loyalty, Devalua. Wait by her side until further orders. Trickery is your specialty. Now you can use your abilities to stop unnecessary bloodshed. Y yes my lord I will leave right away grade A manipulation from Dracula <laughs> farewell Bilitza you have served me well We made a lot of progress in one day. Yeah, but it'll be a while before we can get this place looking like it used to. I remember when we used to watch the sunset on Pirate Island. Oh god. You used to always talk about being the captain of your own ship. Yeah, I remember. Sailing beyond the sunset. We've come quite a long way since then. And because we've come so far, we can't just give up now, right? You're right. Our journey, our journey is not over yet. Vice, Ica. Fina. I'm sorry if I caused you all to worry about me. Are you okay now? Yes, I feel a lot better. Actually, I have a favor to ask of you. Will you... Will you both come with me to the Great Silver Shrine? What? Ramirez was saying that in order to call down the Reins of Destruction, he needs all of the Moon Crystals. I thought that the Crystals were only used to control the Gigas. I didn't know that they could call down the Reins of Destruction. I had no idea that my own people were the ones who were responsible for the deaths of millions. I even have a piece of the silver crystal inside my body. Everything the elders told me, my whole life, that has been a lie. I want to know. I want to know the truth about the crystals, about my people. Vice, Aika, I'll ask you again like I did so long ago. Will you travel with me? Of course we will. Even if you didn't want us to, we'd go with you anyway. No matter what happens, Fina, we'll always be your friends. Thank you very much. What she said. Hey now, you guys weren't planning on leaving me behind, were you? 
Gilder. I don't know, but it sounds like things are just about to get interesting. You didn't think I'd just sit back and let you have all the fun, did you? <laughs> well, it looks like we've got a party again. All right, let's rest up today. We'll leave for Great Sh Silver Shrine tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for informing me, Alfonso. You have done well. Yes, my lord. Of course, I am your loyal servant, your highness. And those personal matters of which I spoke... Ah, very well, Alfonso. I shall grant you what you wish. Mother! <gasps> Enrique! You finally come back, and at last you've come to your senses and returned to us. No, Mother. I have come to warn you of impending danger. Admiral Galcian has betrayed you and is planning on taking over the world. We must try to stop him. Yes, my boy. I know. Alfonso here was kind enough to inform me of Admiral Garcian's plans. <laughs> it seems that he is gathering the moon crystals in order to call down the rings of destruction. <gasps> what? So that was his plan all along. Mother, we must act quickly. We need to get all of our people to shelter. Enrique, please calm yourself. We must think of the situation at hand. If we can get the moon crystals in our possession, our dreams of ruling the world will come true at last! I have made Alfonso the new commander of the Valley and Armada, and we shall fight Gersian! Mother, this is not to be taken lightly! You can't! He's too powerful! Your Highness? <laughs> Do not fear, Your Highness. All of my failures up until this point were made were by Gal Lord Gaussian's orders. If I act on my own accord, I shall bring Gaussian to justice. <laughs> good, Alfonso, good! I see. Very well. You leave me no choice. What? Huh? Enrique, what are you doing? Mother, if you continue like this, you will destroy Valua. I must do this for my country, for my people. No! Oh! Enrique, shoot your sword at once! Oh. Your Highness, please forgive me. Belletza! Enrique has been brainwashed by the air pirates! He's gone mad! Imprison him in the Grand Fortress until he comes to his senses. Please, Your Highness, wait. I... As the new commander of the Valuant Armada, I order you to take the Prince to the Grand Fortress and lock him up. <laughs> if you have any complaints, you can take them up with the Executioner when your head is resting on the block. Very interesting. Two very hateable enemies. She reminds me of Queen Braun a bit. Venus ship is rearing to go. It's at the Cape. Enrique, all you have to do is just like look behind him. Dag damn it, where do you think you're going? The Delphin is still being worked on. Oh right. Okay. The Cape. I understand now.
how does voice acting affect my throat? Um, it mostly doesn't. If, if I'm doing something really raspy, like when I did Demise in Skyward Sword, that hurt. That legit hurt my throat, but anything else is fine. Oh no, I'm using a regular old GameCube controller. Never played Dot Hack, no. Let's go, Vice, to the Great Silver Shrine. Alright, time to head to the Great Silver Shrine. Oh, wait a minute. Um, do I have to buy weapons for Gilder? I just realized something. He's probably got really old equipment on. Berserker mail. Fair enough. To space we go. Hang on, I'm about to increase our speed. Okay, Fina, go as fast as you want. We'll be okay. Great. Look, Crescent Island looks so small from up here. How are they going to breathe? Up in space. ship's magic, I don't know. Vice, now you'll get to see what lies beyond the sunset. This is amazing. We're almost as high as the moons. Vice, look. Over by the silver moon, there's something there. That is my home, the great silver shrine. The death egg. And this was before Mario Galaxy. Holy shit. If there's a civilian bane up here, I'm gonna, like, freak out. I can see the outside, but there's no window. It's not a mirror or anything. How does that do that? did Final Fantasy IX though, Rick. This is Ramirez's old room. He lived here before he joined with Valua. Ramirez built this a long time ago. He's very artistic. There wasn't much that he couldn't do if he put his mind to it. When I was little, he used to make necklaces and bracelets for me all the time. 
It's a model of a really old propeller-driven airship, but the level of detail in this thing is amazing. Ramirez made it while he was still living here. He used to tell me that all he wanted to do was just sail through the vast skies of the world. It's an entire history of the world written in the holy script of the Silvites. Ramirez used to spend all of his time reading this book. He was so intrigued with the little intricacies of the world. It's a map of the entire world. There are smudges all over it. There's a bunch of stuff written in some foreign language. Ramirez used to love looking at maps. He said that it made the world look so small. I never quite understood what he meant by that. You found Ramirez's porn stash. When I say porn stash, I mean just his, like, a porn mustache. That's it. Tink, 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 tink. Silver Shrine looks like. It's amazing. Vice, do you see that building over there? That is the room of the elders. It's the heart of the shrine. To get there, we must travel through the path of emptiness, but be careful, or else you might lose all sense of direction in there. Great. It sounds like it's going to be loads of fun. Well, I guess all we have to do is just not get lost, right? Come on, Vice. I'm going slower. The controls just got worse. I was just about to say that. This, imagine living here, growing up here. There's nothing here, it's just empty. Is there a tink, but there's like a little bit of audio like cut off at the end of it? You hear it? It's kind of like really annoying. Little pops. armor. Oh, there's, there's treasure chests here. Oh. Oh, okay. miss these chests, you can't get them again. Oh, no. Oh, and there's so much walking to do. How many chests are there?
the path of emptiness, you say. There's possibly four chests. Oh boy. Well, at least there's no random encounters. Two out of 27 chests? I would give up. Fuck the items. Fuck the king. Fuck the queen. Fuck King's Landing. God, please. Okay, I got this one already. Just gonna be walking all over the place. Uh, no idea where I'm going. And even if I had a map, it probably wouldn't help. I just have to keep walking randomly until I find a treasure chest. Got this one already. God damn it. I'm just going to keep going right. Chest number two. I'm gonna go back this way again. Oh no. Yeah, Rust is looking better and better each update. I mean, they just did a, a huge building update. And the buildings in Rust now look a lot better than they used to. They're log cabins now, though. It's still gonna be a few months. It's gonna take some time for Rust to be finished, but when it is, it's gonna be cool. I think I told you guys about that new Nicholas game. Um, Dark Castle or something. Maybe it was like Castle in the Darkness. I don't I don't really know. But it looks good. It's got like um old school RPG style menus and items. It's got a uh, 2D platforming similar to like Zelda and Castlevania. It's got, um, it looks a bit like a thousand one spikes. The art is being done by the guy who did, um, who's doing Binding of Isaac Rebirth. And it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, Castle in the Darkness. There it is. You 
looking at thumbnails right now, but you get the idea. I like games like this. Might be shit, but I don't know, it looks, looks kind of cool. I have to say, Nicholas has been really doing a lot of great stuff lately. I haven't had any complaints. It's all been pretty decent. I mean, the thousand re-releases of Cave Story aside. Another silver armor. chest to go. We're, we're gonna, there's a lot of donking happening right about now, and it's gonna still be donking in a few minutes. I still need that one treasure chest. Okay, there's the last one. I have two silver armor and two moon berries, or one moon berry, berry from this, so I need one more. Yeah, if you have a headache, this is not the stream for you. it is. Alright, perfect. We won't be here too much longer. Moonberry. Aura of Denial. I seem to have an aura of denial when I'm trying to pick up girls at a bar. Dunk, dunk. Uh, where did I go? Wrong way. done. And done. Minimal donks from here on out. Might be a dink or two, but that's it. Um, Fina, where are we? We are in the chamber of the elders. Fina, welcome home. These are the elders. Cool guys. I 
trust you have completed your mission. I'm sorry, I collected the crystals, but they were stolen by Ramirez. What? Fina, who... What is that? I see you've brought some of the island dwellers back with you. How amusing. Hey, it looks like there's a bunch of them. I see, so Ramirez has turned after all. When he stopped contacting us, we feared the worst. When he was here in the shrine, he was so loyal, I can't imagine what made him change. If he gave the crystals to the island dwellers, this is very grave news indeed. If he has turned, and he has all six crystals, he may release the seal on Zelos. That would be tragic. Zelos, what's grave news? What are you talking about? Elder Prime, please. I want to know the truth. Ramirez said that he was gathering the moon crystals to raise the lost continent to unleash the reins of destruction. He told me that the Sylvites called down the reins of destruction on the old world. Is that true? Is that what the crystals are used for? Oh, young Fina, you have discovered the truth about the crystals. I suppose the time has come to tell you everything. I shall take you to the Hall of Knowledge, where you will find the truth. Vice, I don't like this. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. How about you? I'm not sure yet. I feel strange. Hey, Fina, where'd the crazy old man go? I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. I've never been here before. You are in the Hall of Knowledge. This is where you will find the Chronicles of Arcadia. It is here where you may observe the events that shaped the world as you know it. Look not with your eyes, but with your hearts. You will see the power of the moon crystals and witness the reigns of destruction. How can one look with one's heart? Looks like a giant island. This is Soltis. Long ago, the continent flourished under the light of the silver moon. It was our home. So there is one continent for each moon, right? You are correct. The world was at peace, and its population was thirsting for knowledge. things. Except Reckman, that, that wasn't his fault. But their leaders use their newfound knowledge to create the Gigas. I believe you have seen what the Gigas can do firsthand. They all sought the power of the moon crystals. These six little gems twisted the hearts and souls of men. world became a nightmare. One thousand atrocities resulted in countless deaths. Even after most of the world was destroyed, the survivors sought to kill rather than to heal. We watched and judged. We decided that the world could not be saved. Everything came from nothing, so to complete the cycle we decided to destroy everything so that the world once again be nothing. We believed that a new peaceful world would rise from the ashes of the old. Zelos, our own Gigas, was born. It was a Gigas born from nothing, but it encompassed everything. It was truly mighty. This man is speaking in riddles. We then commanded Zelos to focus its energy on the moons. It's 
a bit Chrono Trigger-ish. Moonstones battered the land. The world was cleansed of evil. Zelos was, was the cause of the rains of destruction. When it was over, we placed Zelos in a state of suspended animation and sealed him in the depths, depths of Solstice with our magic. It was a magical seal so great that only the power of the six moon crystals together could break it. Afterwards, we sent Solstice along with Zelos into deep sky, where we hoped it would remain lost forever. Zelos was too powerful. Never should a living soul animate him. We separated the shrine from the rest of Soltis and fled to the skies. Since the days of the old world, we have been watching the world rise from its ashes. So this great silver shrine carried the Silvites to safety after they destroyed the world. How convenient. You caused the reins of destruction. So now you understand the truth. Fina, when we sent you on your mission, it was not to stop Valua from using the Gigas. It was to once again call down the reins of destruction. <gasps> you used her? That's horrible. Fina, you saw with your own eyes the anger, the hate, the suffering, the death. Their quest for power would only consume them. We must cleanse the world. Vice, we see in your heart that you have helped Fina on her quest. I will allow you to stay here in the Great Silver Shrine and live out, or live in the new world we are about to create. Will you aid us? Who do you think you are? You think you could just ask us to forget everyone that we care about? You are no different from Galcian. If the world isn't meeting your standards, then you feel you can destroy it? We won't allow it. Fina, you are one of us. You understand. No. I do not understand, Elders. You are all wrong. How can you think like this? What? Vice and the others have taught me something. I learned that no matter what happens, you have to be strong. Even if your home is burned to the ground, even if you're facing impossible odds, and even when you don't know who to trust. Hit close to home, Fina. You're my girl, Fina. You have to be strong and fight for a better future. I... I believe in what I have learned. As long as the people of this world have the strength in their hearts, they will be able to overcome anything. There has to be a way to return to... Uh, peace to the world without calling down the reins of destructions. Fina. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that world now belongs to me. I will bring new order to the world. All shall bow before me. Gaussian. How did you get in here? <laughs> did you forget, little girl, that Ramirez is also a Sylvite? He too has a ship capable of reaching this place. I have come to claim the Silver Crystal. <gasps> what? Look out! <laughs> no. Ramirez, or rather, sorry, Elders, I understand your wish to mold the world into how you see fit, but you will be, you will not be the ones with the power to make that decision. Ramirez is much too valuable to me. I could not take the crystal from his body. I thought of taking the crystal from you, Fina, but I realized that there is a much easier way of getting one. Now the six crystals are in my possession. Watch as the world bows before me. Damn. 
Gaussian. Elder Prime. Do not cry, Fina. Elder Prime is now free. He has returned to a state of nothingness. But Ramirez has acquired all six of the crystals. The world will crumble before them. All is lost. Uh -uh. No, I refuse to give up. I can't sit here and watch the people of the world be slaughtered. We will stop them. We can't let them unleash the reins of destruction. Fina, it is hopeless. Vice, we've got to go back to Deep Sky and find Saltus. Gaussian and Ramirez must be stopped. All right, everyone, you heard Fina. We've got to stop them. Island dwellers, if you wish, I can send you back to the entrance of the shrine. Very well, hold still. No, we'll just walk. We'll donk our way there. No problem. Gaussian and Ramirez probably went back to their headquarters. We should probably do the same. They will probably be trying to raise Soltis from beneath the clouds soon. I don't know what will happen if they do. Nevertheless, we should hurry back. We can't waste another moment here. Vice, I heard a rumor concerning Dangle Island a little while ago. According to my sources, Galcians built some sort of elevator that leads down beneath the Great Cloud Sea. Do you think they built it to try to get to Saltus? Probably, and I bet they're heading there with the moon crystals as we speak. Well, it looks like we have know where we need to go. Let's try and get to Saltus through Dangrel Island. We need to stop Galcian. Hey, the island's back. Uh, for the Anon that asked no, the answer is no. I, I never found out what it sounded, that sound was. The, the plastic tubes being dropped off from a high location. It just sounded like that and nothing more. It was just a really odd, hollow, plasticky sound, but it's it's now completely... There's nothing. Weird stuff happens in my neighborhood. One time this lady took off all her clothes and went into my front lawn and started bowing and, and praising a statue of St. Anthony that my grandmother has in the front. Just completely naked. Just an older lady, you know, in her 50s or something, and she just, yeah, just completely just took all her clothes off and just hung out there for like an hour. It was really weird. Yep. Hey Vice, how's it going? Still trying to explore as much of the world as you can, I see. Well then, let me check your discovery log. Ah, you've made 37 discoveries. You haven't found much since I last saw you. I'll give you something when you find some more. No, nah, I was probably about 16 at the time when that happened. I think she saw it as like a sign from above or something. I have no idea. I really don't know what caused it. It was just weird. We had to tell her to leave or we would call the cops. Like, we let her hang out for a bit. We figured that maybe she would stop, but she never did. Really fucking bizarre story. Would you like some Domingos? Where is the Yafatoman sword guy? I need to get the, the shop upgraded. 
Is this him? Yep, that's him. I've got a collection of some of the finest weapons that you'll ever see. I cannot work in this paltry environment. How can you expect me to forge legendary weapons in these conditions? I require more sophisticated tools. All of, all of the modifications I need to make this area adequate will cost 4,000 gold. There we go. It's good to know that you appreciate quality. I'll have my shop remodeled by the time you return to the island. So I'm going to leave the island and come back. Vice is going to discover everything. That's all there is to it. No, no discoveries left for anyone else. Hey, Mr. Who. I think that should hopefully work. Domingo can find discoveries before you. You can still find them and turn them in, but you won't get as much money. Oh, that's interesting. I already have some vellum, so I could get the sword right now. Now that I have an adequate forge, I can make weapons befitting your crew. How would you like to purchase something from me? Vice, have you ever heard of Velorium? It is rumored to be lighter than a feather and harder than a diamond. Velorium, even in the hands of a mediocre swordsmith, would produce superior weapons. If you are able to acquire some and bring it to me, I will be able to craft weapon weapons of legendary quality. I shall begin forging your blade at once! This will be my greatest creation. May it serve you well. Oh, he makes uh, armor too. Hmm. Is this it? Is is this the ultimate weapon, or or what? Do I have to come back and get it later, or something? come back. So do I have to take my ship again and then come back? A great weapon in the hands of a novice will eventually find its... Okay. Leave island and come back. Wow. Okay. All you really have to do is, like, what if you just go to sleep and then come back? That would be so much better. It would make more sense. My Velorium. Clank, 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 clank. A 
Okay, ultimate weapon. I have finished. I present to you the Vorlik Blade. Yes, since this blade was crafted solely for you, I customized the guard and pommel to fit in your hand. This is the finest blade I have ever created. May it serve you well. Now that I have an adequate forge... Oh, right, okay. Just gonna put this on real quick. There it is. Awesome. Alright, gonna buy Gilder Special. A moon wing. Uh, let's buy... The Robe of Faith for Fina, maybe? She could use the extra defense. She's been dying, like, really easily. I gave her something that increases her will. But that's kind of not that great for her. Captain's Cloak. What's D.O. again? Dodge. Right. Dodge. That's fine. Um, let's see. Dodge. I'm going to give this to Ika because she could use it, I think. That'll do for now. You may have the armor that makes all normal attacks do no damage. Really? Saved its owner many times. No, I don't have that armor. Well, Morgan Freeman will be around for quite a while. No matter what Andy Dufresne may say. Samus Saturn, please don't spam. Oh, it's already on the wall. Great. Well, now Ica's face is going to be on the wall. Is that a lizard? Yo, there's a fucking lizard on the thing. Um, for the person who's wondering what game I'll do after Skies, I'm thinking about doing uh, Ocarina of Time 3D Master Quest. That is currently my plan. It, it is not 100%. I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if Master Quest would be something I want to do because I don't like to um, engage in like really, really, really long games. And I've never completed Master Quest, but we'll, we'll see. Mm. 
Master Quest isn't too difficult. Okay. Let's check out this new sword. Meister Quest. Yeah, big sword. What I meant by that rape escape was this game was 40 hours. I don't know if I felt like engaging in another like really, really long game after having played a really, really long game. Okay, so where where are the other moonfish? I'm looking for moonfish and discoveries at this point. Hey, can I get a discovery map if anyone's uh, interested? Oh, look, there it is. There's Blueheim, just dead on the side of the mountain. Yeah, I'll do Master Quest then. That, that'll be fine. We did it! God. Yeah, trying to figure out which moonfish I missed is going to be torture. You have found the deers. Cool. There's the discoveries map. Once upon a time, there was a gentle creature called the deers that lived in the forest. The villagers believed that getting kicked by the deers would make them rich, so they chased him around until he ran away. <laughs> yeah, for Tolman fairy tale. That is one hell of a fairy tale. There should be a lower sky discovery somewhere in, in this area. Let's see if we can't find it. It is right here. Oh, there it is. You found the Stone Lovers. It is said that the tomb of the great Yafatoma king is hidden somewhere near the statue. The people of Yafatoma believe that this statue was carved after his death to show the love that his people had for him and the love that he had for his wife. There should be a discovery here, but I don't know if it's something I have already. Uh, let's take a look. Might just be like the Great Wall or something. Yeah, it's nothing. Maybe it's under. Up here, maybe? Thirty-seven. Discovery number thirty-seven.
battle. We got a battle. Yeah, I think the Great Wall wasn't necessarily designed for um, keeping intruders out because it's a sky wall. But they said it was more something like, was it for show or something? Dears. Watch ta uh, watchtowers to warn about enemies. Yeah, that's what it was. It wasn't even about trying to keep people out. Far from it. Just fly under the wall. I'm gonna use Rain of Swords on one enemy. Oh wait, no, two. Other discoveries, there's some up north here. Some sky fucking seahorses or some shit. What discovery do you guys like the best so far? Does anyone have any favorites? I know, you know, we've we've definitely seen a bunch of them, so it's probably really hard to remember. But if anyone has any ideas on a discovery they particularly liked, let me know. I'm curious. The train? Yeah, I like the train too. Scrim and Bert. That's a good one. Yeah, Sky Train. I like that satellite above the red, the red moon. I like that one a lot. The Sky Train, it was... was I mean, you, it's hard to top that one. Tricyclone was good. The waterfall thing in the desert area, yeah. Clearly Deerce. Everyone likes the Deerce now. You have found the Mother Tree. This tree is revered by the Yafatomans in one of their ancient scriptures. It says, he who climbs to the top of this tree will someday conquer the world. The tree is now 2,000 years old. To this day, no one has made it to the top. Here. Mother tree. Oh god, I just did a Robin Williams impression. Like, subconsciously. A and now I feel, like, terrible. Oh, this is the, the, the Bappy Jail. Gay Bappy Jail in, in the sky. Also, if I, uh, if I could just point something out before I forget. All you face punch people, I know you're listening. I just want you to know I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. We must celebrate Robin Williams' life with impressions. <laughs> he was a brilliant man, and I loved just about everything that guy has done, even the cocaine. But aside from, aside from all that, let's celebrate his life. Let us remember 
why he was so amazing. And I can think of about 10,000 reasons why Robin Williams was one of the most amazing comedians of our time. Like my heart just sunk. My heart completely just sunk when, when I found out. This is a moving discovery, like here-ish. I guess we'll wait for it. Yeah, the face punch people seem to be really really cool. They like the site a lot. They have a thread that they post in quite frequently. I've checked it out a few times. So I just wanted to let them know, like, I am aware of, of how much you enjoy the stream, and, and it's pretty fucking cool. You're better off waiting by Mount Kazai near the cloud roof. Okay. Who's this jabroni? Is Mount Kazai anyway? It's, it's like I was told to to wait. Well, there's one in the sky too. On this map here, I mean, we're hunting now. We're we're like deep in hunt mode, but it says there's an upper sky moving discovery right here. This tree doesn't move, does it? No, the tree was... 79. That's... that's... A, a stationary one. But... This object in the sky passes over... This tree, I believe. Flying turtle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fly. <laughs> I'm okay. I like how I, you know, I'm just okay with there being a flying turtle in this game. It's really, it's okay, it's fine. Should I just wait for this thing? One of fucking Dana Carvey's worst moves professionally. Okay. Yeah, this is this is gonna be tough. Trying to find all these discoveries. I have um, the map up. I'm trying real hard. We're, we're we're explorers, guys. We're doing this together. It's like we're we're in the new world, and we're looking around, trying to find fucking flying turtles and other such nonsense. Is that it? No, that's just a. The jabroni ship again. I watched, um, what is it, Ikari Warriors, the a AVGN episode of with the Ikari Warriors, and Kyle Justin is, uh, he's doing a song. What, 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 can anyone remember the chorus to that song? Something about hair. I know it was like dick turrets or something. It 
someone's gonna know exactly what that is. I know. Yeah, where did their hair go? <laughs> Oh my god, I love that so much. That made me laugh fucking so hard. And I've seen that episode, I just forgot about it. Jabroni ship in the distance. It's found to the north of Yafatoma, sometimes past Tenkau Island, sometimes near Mother Tree, sometimes it almost looks like it's crossing into the southern portion. You can usually find it just flying north of Yafatoma with your ship hovering just below the cloud ceiling. On occasion, you may break through the cloud ceiling in order to find it. Alright. Nah, it's not that good. I saw Kyle Justin live for the AVGN movie. Um, I gotta hear this. I need it to get stuck in my head. Scrotum guns. Yeah. Where did the hair go? <laughs> Where did, Where, did the the hair go? Go? <laughs> Where did the Wallace hair go? Where did the hair go? Wallace was three miles high Pink Neotar tanks wanna get with this guy It was the 80s and big hair was a thing While Wallace was thick and luscious Raisins hair was thinning Jealous and distraught They say raisins got duct tape and ripped all Wallace's hair off Oh, oh, oh where did the hair go? What a, what? Where did the hair go? What a stupid song. Where did the hair go? I could just see James's face. That stupid face he does. That is so wonderful. I remember when these golden guns were young. Pink tanks always made love to the scrotum gun. Don't even ask. Listen, do yourself a favor. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's not the best AVGN episode, but it's still pretty funny. You should uh, check it out. It's it's called uh, Where Did uh, Ikari Warriors, and uh, it's their scrotum guns in the game. Man, seeing that movie made me love AVGN even more. I really did. And the movie wasn't even that amazing. It was fun. But it, it just made me appreciate what he's done. Like, how much work he puts into his material. Like, he's someone to aspire to be. Like, if you really, really look at, like, what quality, like, he's put out for AVGN and for this movie. I mean, all the other stuff, too. Monster Madness. It's like insane it's absolutely insane he's a fucking legend from Jin Ali gotcha gotcha Ryugu turtle once upon a time an old man rescued a turtle who was pick being picked on by the neighborhood children Thanking the old man, the turtle offered to give the old man a ride on his back. So into the sky they flew, to a faraway land. I want to ride on a magic fucking turtle. I want to go to space and see the space cunts. That's all I want to do. I want to fucking see the space cunts. I, don't, I want to wank forever with the space turtle. Oh, do we have to do this again, chick? Yes, we're doing this again. This will cheer everyone up. I'll give you a hint. You're gonna cringe. Brahman crap. Just like an angel. This kid makes me cry. You float like a brother. Like a brother. In a beautiful world. 
I wish I was special You're so fucking special Bramo Grip Bramo Wado Oh Wado What the hell am I doing here? If he's hurt Get ready for Brady I want to go control Get ready for it I want a perfect Brady I want a perfect soul I want you to know Okay, that's enough Yeah, so uh So if you're wondering, yeah, that's Brahman Creep if uh, if you missed it, okay, thank you. You have found the wander birds. The wander birds are large migratory birds from the far north, revered since ancient times as symbols of long life. Their cry is rarely ever heard, but the clarity and beauty of their song is said to put all other birds to shame. All right. Well, we found a few really interesting discoveries, and there's probably let's look for a few more. There's some, like, up in this area. Uh, Joel and I were talking about Creep not too long ago. We were talking about the song Creep. And about how last time Radiohead did the song live, it was... It kind of sounded bad. And, um, Radiohead actually, like, Tom York hates doing the song Creep. Like, he's gone on record saying he, he really, really doesn't like that song anymore, and he really just wants to get away from it. And um, the Pixies, like, are one of Radiohead, uh, Radiohead's collective favorite bands. And when they toured together, when the Pixies reformed, they asked Radiohead to play that song. They asked them to play Creep. So Radiohead... You know, they did Creep because they're big Pixies fans and they didn't want to disappoint the Pixies. And it sounded like, as James Rolfe would say, like, ass! It seemed like Tom York wasn't into it at all. No emotion, no expression. Just completely, completely devoid of anything that made it a decent song. And the worst part is, he was forgetting lyrics. Perfect Browdy. I'm not really a big Pablo Honey fan, to be honest. I know some people really like that album. The only song I like on, on Pablo Honey is You, really. And maybe the song, Been Thinking About You, But Why Should I Care, Whatever the Rest of the Words Are. I'm so filled with angst, Cause it's the early 90s, And why should I care? Why should I care? Whatever that song is. Um, what, what discoveries here? That's uh, right. I've been thinking about you specifically, F viewer, nondescript viewer. It says there's a lower sky discovery, but I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fucking annoying, isn't it? No, 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 no. Hang on now. Pablo Honey is not a terrible album. I, I just don't think it's my favorite. That's all. I, I think they've done so much better than Pablo Honey. But yeah, I'm not detracting from people that like it because I, I totally get it. I like the Benz personally. I think that one could possibly be my favorite um, album. But not Brahman Crep.
you have found the ancient fish. A species of fish that was believed to have been extinct millions of years ago. It's vestigial gills and fins that look like hands and feet seem to be uh, pointing to an evolutionary path from the waters to the dry land and then to the skies. Godspeed, great fish. Godspeed. You what? Guys, what the fuck? Is the fish trying to fight me? Oh my god, a squid! Oh my god, that was terrifying! Wow, oh, that squid's huge! It's bigger than our ship! I've heard stories about a giant squid, but I never actually believed any of them. All right, everyone, battle station. That legit scared me. Abyspo. I don't know what kind of damage this thing's gonna do. Lulu's brother. Oh, no, 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 no. Squid's gonna be sticking around for a little while. I thought maybe one or two cannon hits might take care of it. Thulu. Yeah, we could feed the poor section of Valua with its tentacles. Like the whole section. Think of all the squidding spaghetti that Walrus could eat if we just harvest this thing's glands. I wanna be your gland! I wanna hold your gland. Doesn't this thing know what to give up? It's already lost one leg and it's still attacking us. That one tentacle alone could probably feed us for a month. What a waste. I wanna hold your gland. Please. Say to me. You make me be your gland. What is Domingo's act, uh, ability, though? We're gonna focus up. We're gonna unleash some devastation on him next round. True story about the Beatles. Sometimes when they were live, they would um, actually replace some words. So the Beatles were cheeky little cunts. I'll tell you how. So I wanna hold your gland. That's real. They they used to do that. The girls would be screaming so loudly, and the audience would be clapping so much that they wouldn't be able to hear themselves sing, and they figured they could get away with it. So they would sing, you know, I wanna hold your gland. Um, another thing that they would do is um, the song Day Tripper, right? There's a, there's a line that goes, She's a big teaser. She got me half the way there now. She's a big teaser. So live they would sing, She's a prick teaser. She took me half the way there now. She's a prick teaser. So there's, there's one for you, Cheeky little fucking cunts. I love them. But then, 
There's, they, they snuck something onto their album, Rubber Soul, which you guys probably wouldn't be aware of. Get ready for the whole thing to be, the, the whole VOD to be muted, but I'll just play it. Okay, listen to what's this part, they're saying tit. Tit 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 That's exactly what you think they're saying. Cannon will, will definitely, definitely do the trick. Yeah, the Beatles definitely snuck in a few things. Here's one for you. Penny Lane, right? There's a lyric, um, Penny Lane is in my ear and in my eye For a fish and finger pie in summer Meanwhile back... Yeah, okay, that part... Finger pie? Uh, what do you think that is, guys? Such an innocent sounding song, too. I mean, all you have to do is think about it for a minute. You listen to the song a thousand times. And then finally, you just think about it for one second. Oh, oops. Vice, you're the captain here. We're counting on you to know these things. All right, everyone, brace for impact. I missed the Moonstone Cannon because I, I tried to swing behind the goddamn whale. I guess, oh whale. Oh wait, no, it's a squid. Oh, oh squid. We got this, don't worry. I don't, I'm not pulling any punches. No punches pulled. Full power. Hey Jude. If you listen closely, you can hear Paul McCartney say, Fucking hell. Sexy Sadie, a song written about uh, Maharishi, which was the spiritual advisor in India that everyone was raving about, that Lenin was pissed because he, he was a hypocrite. Lenin found out he was a hypocrite. And um, he wanted to write a song called Maharishi. What have you done? You made a fool of everyone. Oh. You made a fool of everyone, Maharishi. So he changed it. George Harrison was like, I don't know if you should do that, John. So George was like, you should change it. So then John changed the lyric to Sexy Sadie. There you go. I'm full of useless Beatles trivia. They really are a great band. Well... I mean, yeah, they are a great band. Half of them are dead, the others are in their 70s, but the, the albums still exist. And, um... The, yeah, squids explode, but you didn't know. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Look at that. Better deck. What else did I get from this thing? Did I get, uh... Some, well, hey, uh, did anyone else see what other item I got?
can I rant about how Paul died and Fall was given plastic surgery to look like him so he could continue performing as the Beatles and that's why Paul McCartney was always terrible from the moment he died forward? No. It's bullshit. Well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. Seriously, though, um... If you're hunting large ship battles, monsters, there's one to the northwest of the of the world, okay? I'll remember that. Um, before I do that, though, did anyone else know what I got? I'm, I'm really curious. I don't see it anywhere. Maybe it's good? I just don't want to miss it. I'll just keep traveling, and uh, I'll try to fight that other battle tonight. Piece of trivia. John Lennon was so sick of people trying to analyze his lyrics and getting it completely wrong that he wrote a song called Glass Onion that was made completely as a way to make fun of those people. And he actually wrote, um, I am the walrus, as another attempt to, uh, make fun of those people, too. Because I am the walrus, admittedly by Lennon, has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Just a random series of, of phrases. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to see him if you hadn't already. Glass Onion is awesome. Uh, it's, you want me to check the one to the right? It's too late now. Martha, my dear. There you go. There's another one. Martha, my dear, was was Rodin. Uh, Rodin. Wow. English. Was written about Paul's dog. He had a, a dog named Martha. And he liked it. So he wrote a song about it. He wrote a song about an octopus. Shut up, Ringo. You're not even the best drummer in the Beatles. I could keep them coming. Zeppelin. Pink Floyd. Uh, to a lesser extent, The Doors. I mean, Nirvana. There's, there's a lot of bands that I have tons of useless trivia about. Like, when I really get it... I You know, people buy me books and stuff. But, like, when I get into a band, I like to learn everything about them. Pink Floyd trivia. I know a little bit about the Pixies. I Actually, I know quite a bit about them, but, uh... Some Zeppelin trivia. Do you guys know about the Mud Shark incident? There was a famous rumor that uh, Led Zeppelin was staying at some ice fishing like hotel, and um, I guess it was Alaska. I don't know. I suppose. Um, and they caught a mud shark and they put it in a girl's vagina. Sorry to be gross, but just telling you the story. The uh, the whole story became this like mad rumor. And, um, it, it stuck with them for a long time. I think Jimmy Page bought Aleister Crowley's house. He was said to have been in, into the occult. He ripped off a number of musicians to write songs. But, he, I mean, he kind of updated a lot of old blues standards. And then people kind of rip on Zeppelin for stealing... I would say that Zeppelin's best songs, like Kashmir, Ten Years Gone, almost anything off of Physical Graffiti, is pretty much amazing, and some of their best work, and it has no, absolutely no 
indication of being stolen from anywhere. So when people rip on Zeppelin for stealing, I'm not really with it. Piece of Beatle trivia. Well, I got one more Beatle trivia, I just remembered. Um, there was a Saturday Night Live episode where uh, Lauren Michaels offered $500 to each Beatle if they would reform on Saturday Night Live. If they would just head on down before the end of the show and just reform and play some music. And um, John and Paul were actually hanging out at the time. And uh, they were really considering doing it, but they were like tired. And I think they probably smoked some weed or something. So they didn't do it. But yeah, there's a famous story for you. I mean, Floyd stuff, I could answer almost any question about Floyd. I just can't think of a whole... No, $500. Wrong Beatles, chick. Did you know that George Harrison's memorial tree was, was devoured by Beatles? How did Pink Floyd get its name? Very good question. Um, Sid Barrett, the original frontman of, of Floyd, before he went insane by taking way too much acid, people would slip acid into his coffee because they, they wanted to fuck with him and, and they wanted to give him, you know, make him crazy because he was fun when he was on acid or something. And he ended up, um, they kicked him out of the band because he was too unreliable. His, he's got a whole mythos. Seriously, you guys should research Sid Barrett. Watch like a documentary. It's fascinating. He was the original dude from Floyd. He was a genius, in my opinion. I loved his music. It was very weird, but it was it was extremely creative. Um, yeah, he uh, he named the band Pink Floyd after two of his favorite jazz musicians, Pink Anderson and Floyd Council, and. Um, that's how the name of the band happened. Just like that. There's a discovery here. It's like right here. Oh, by the way, which one's pink? You have found the Mystic Orchid. Once upon a time, there was a faraway island where jeweled fruit grew on the trees. A young man took one of the fruits to cure his sick mother, but in return, had come back to the island to become one of the magical trees. Toaster Squirrel, what's this? Uh, there's a game? It looks good, Pete. I don't mind if you spam the chat. Um, there's a debut title called Last Refuge, and it looks pretty interesting. Reminds me a bit of like the, the Castlevania Metroid E-type games from what I'm looking at. I mean, Xeno Striker has always been really supportive of this website, so you guys should check out his game. Nice art, dude, as always. Isn't that the, the game with the vine stuff in it? Uh, not really, Humphrey. I didn't really care for that song. Wall from Floyd, that album, came about when Roger Waters and the rest of the guys were performing the Animals tour. Um, that They were doing like the Animals album, various other songs, back in I think 77 or 78. What happened was uh, some fans were being drunk idiots and like setting off fireworks and just 
being obnoxious pricks. And Roger Waters got really, really pissed. And he lured one of the fans to the stage. And he spat in his face. And that event led him to really think hard about, you know, the separation between the audience and the performers. And he thought, you know, rather kind of naively, but, you know, in a way it was like ins inspiration, I guess. What if there was a wall, like a physical wall between the performers and the audience? And that's kind of where the wall came from. That, that's the genesis of that idea. And, and then he eventually turned it into an album. And the themes of that album have to do a lot with that moment, amongst other moments too, but yeah, specifically that one. Um, what am I looking for? A giant looper? Where is this motherfucker? Did this motherfucker just find me? Oh shit. I've never seen a bird this big before. I don't know, but it looks like he's hungry. Now, when I say naive, Anon, what I meant was... For him, at the time, it was a naive idea, considering he was thinking like of building an actual wall between the band and the audience. The idea itself was completely sound, but he was like actually dead ass on building some kind of like structure in between himself and the audience. And that's where the idea of, well, what if we do this stage show where we put bricks together on stage one brick at a time to create a giant wall? So that's kind of where that, that's what I meant with that. He was really pissed at himself when he did that, by the way. Like when he spat on that fan, he was not happy about that. He's expressed remorse about it um, in later interviews. Wait, are you from Staten Island, Warrior of Rock? I think you are. You mentioned that you, you knew some things. So you're from Staten Island. What, um, may I ask, uh, are you still in school? And in a general sense, where you, what part of the island are you from? Just out of curiosity. South Shore, North, you know, just, just curious. That scream, it's too powerful. It's going to tear the ship apart. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's, he's doing some pretty nice damage here. It's not open. Uh, the Empire of Taste is not open. Like, every time I drive by there, it's like... They're still not there. Like, it's just the building is there, but they're not open for business. So the commercial was made all that time ago. I'll use a complete kit. And yet, no progress has been made.
you're still in school and you're from the South Shore. Okay. Cool. Nice to have someone from the island here. My cousin uh, teaches at one of the local schools, and uh, he gave them a project. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god, that, att that didn't do that much damage. So, my cousin teaches um, high schoolers, and he gave them a project about media. Like, take something from media, do a presentation on it. I'm sure it was more specific than that. But, um, one of the students' presentations had a number of um, video game YouTubers and streamers. And when they were doing the presentation, the vine sauce mushroom was in it. And my cousin was like, wait a minute, that's my cousin's website. They were like, bullshit. They're like, I don't believe you. You know, I don't believe you that, that your cousin, or you know someone from vine sauce, that there's no way. And um, my cousin took a picture with me and then he showed them and I gave him a few cards to give them. <laughs> And they were like, they apparently were really, really shocked because they didn't think that there was any YouTubers or anything like that video game oriented based from Staten Island. I suppose we have to take a risk sometimes. Just watch out for its attacks, okay, Vice? All right, Moonstone Cannon, fire. How do I feel about Coney Island? Uh, Coney Island got better. It used to be a cesspool. Uh, there was a lot of condoms and needles on the beach, if I remember correctly. Um, the neighborhood over there can be a little sketchy at times. I've heard some really nasty stories. But I saw the white stripes at Coney Island years ago, and that was awesome. And they've really, really improved Coney Island. They've added, added some new rides. And it's becoming a destination again for New Yorkers. So, yeah, I think it's great. I'm really happy that they've improved that place. I believe Nathan's hot dog started in Coney Island. I love living in New York, though, because there's just always stuff going on. When uh, me and Reds met up for the um, AVGN movie, we had a, a nice chat about Manhattan and how it would be kind of a trip to actually live there, but it's nice to be able to visit without too much of a hassle, because there's just everything there, and you can get there by public transportation fairly cheap. Like, for me, I take a ferry boat that's free. I could take a, a train that costs, like, $3 to a ferry that's free to another train that takes, uh, $3. And for 6 bucks and one hour, I am in Manhattan, in the middle of Manhattan, and I can just hang out, explore, walk around. It's amazing.
Yeah, but New York is a huge state. It's, you know, some people are like an eight hour drive away from Manhattan, from the city. Where'd the bird go? Behind us. It's gotten behind us somehow. Uh oh. This bird is, is kind of annoying, huh? torpedo because I could probably get a moonstone cannon on him if I just chill. Oh, oh, he's almost dead. One more hit. If I could move to another state or country, um, I don't know about moving. I think I would love to have a house someplace else, but I, I am a New Yorker and I love New York. I would move to Manhattan. I don't live there. I would like to. Um, part of me would really love to live there. And another part's like, eh. But um, any other place, I would probably... Um, Chicago was cool. I like cities. But I would have a house someplace. Someplace hot, maybe. I don't know. It's a really tough question to answer. If I still don't kill this guy by, by then, then we'll complete kit. Chicago was definitely great. I love Chicago, and one of my favorite bands is from based in Chicago, Wilco. Got him. I like how he goes down exploding and spinning. Gold bullion. Yeah, I go to New Jersey quite a bit. I, I go there to eat. Um, there's a few places, like the, the mall there is better, like there's better stores with stuff I, I wear as opposed to, you know, Guido fucking, our mall is just Guido gear. White t-shirts. And, uh, don't worry about it, it's fine. It's not all that, but it, it's really... Our mall doesn't really have anything I'm interested in. They did open up a Lego store, though, which is kind of cool. Just recently. Um, yeah, New Jersey's cool, though. There's, it's great at times. It's great not to live there, but I like to visit because there's a lot of good restaurants. And... Gas is cheaper, so... Yafatoma again somehow. There's a lot of discoveries over to this way right here. Let's see if we can find some of those. I got a crystal crystal ball from the giant squid. Let's see what that is. Crystal ball. 
crystal ball. Or was it a crystal uh, crystalline box, was it? It's not in my list anywhere. Discovery somewhere around here. Somewhere. There it is. You have found the Looper's Nest. Loopers are mysterious creatures, rarely seen even by the most seasoned of sailors. They nest in their stone reefs, and their young stay in the nests until they mature. Loopers are white at birth, but turn various colors as they age. I would assume giant looper is here somewhere. Almost without a doubt, there's a looper in this area. The giant one. I, I maybe won't fight him today, but at least I know where he is. Alright, there's a few discoveries over this way. There's one. There's two. Giant's hammer. There's the giant's hammer there. There's one this way. Okay, the giant throne, I got that one. here. Maybe. Maybe it's underneath? No. Nothing. Wisps. Oh wait, this this could be this could be something. Yeah. This thing still don't die in one hit. Pretty powerful. There should be like two discoveries here, and then there's one underneath the clouds. I'll just get a few more discoveries. I'll probably uh, call it after that. All right, rocks nests. We got that one twice, three times. According to this map, there's only that one there. But there's one here, and in between here and the other island. So there's one here, and then there's there's one here, like in the middle of nowhere, and not below the clouds either. Yeah, 
It doesn't move. It, it stays put. There's a ship in the distance. There's nothing here. Any ideas, purple stuff? I did the math, I'm still missing. So that's 21. I believe this one's 20, and 19 is like right here. It's like, what do you mean? There's nothing here though. Uh, the number is, is 19. Discovery is on an invisible island south of the Will-O-Wisps. Just cruise around the area until, until your compass goes nuts. You can get it after the Iron Gate. Oh my god. Two hours to find it? Huh. It's right south of Will-O-Wisps. Okay. The most unnecessary Cutlass Fury ever. It missed running. It doesn't even have shoes. We did it! Okay, Will-O-Wisps. We're gonna go to the Will-O-Wisps. Okay, and then directly south of Will-O-Wisps. Wow, that really was incredibly easy. Two hours it took someone to find this. You have found the mysterious rings. Huge geometric shapes that mysteriously appear on the ground overnight. Reports have been very frequent lately. Old records speak of a similar phenomenon. I mentioned two or three glowing balls of light that appear the night before the shapes are found. Sounds like real life. Alright, now there's one under. It's east, and it's underneath. Or it might be above, actually. We're in the right spot. We're right next to the bean. The human bean. So I guess it should be here, but I'm not sure if it's above or below. I think it's above, actually. Below, there's something to the south, I think. There's an arrow pointing directly to this, uh, thing. Let's see... Directly south should be something like right here. On top of the discovery, if it's upper... Right, right, right. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, according to the map. Okay, 63. I am right on top of 63. South again. Is this another invisible one? Yes, it is. You have found the bottomless pit. A chimney like Rocky Mountain with hollow center rising up from the great cloud sea. From the depths of the pit, it is said that a woman's weeping can be heard in the wind. Could this be the mythical entrance to the land of the dead? Creepy as fuck. That is some creepy shit, and I love it. Okay, now we kind of just fly along here and look and see what we can find. There should be something either headed straight for me or will be coming from behind me in just a minute. And it stops just up ahead. It's path. Just, just at Gordo's Bistro here. Could it be the flutterflies? What number is this? This is number 71. Okay, so there's another object that is in Oh, wait a second. This isn't above the clouds. This is This is down this way. So we got to bump into these things like this way right here in the middle, which means random battles possibly. That's not them. Wow, I just got a fuckload of, of those things. That's not them either. Oh, this one's gonna suck. Yes, good thing you have that gun, Gilder, so you could run right up to the enemy and shoot him in the face.
I wish they were all that easy. Oh, there is a trick to seeing them. Okay. Interesting. Let's do the trick to getting the flutterflies. Oh, wait, is this them? No. Just those things again. One. That's right. I remember this now. Some of these discoveries are kind of beansy in the sense that you have to reset if you want to, like, reset their location. I remember these being really, really shitty. Thank you for the heads up there, purple stuff. Oh, wait, what's that? I saw something in the distance. That's a ship. All right, I'm right on top. Okay. So I reset, I fly south, and I look for an orange thing. Well, Grape, I've done this on stream three years ago, so maybe you're subconsciously getting transmissions from that stream. south. I don't know how high up or how low they're going to be. I don't think that was them. They're above the cloud layer? Oh, god damn it. Well, we're resetting again. Just like last time, I have to get all the discoveries. That way you guys can find one, pick a favorite, and we can discuss. I think maybe I'll make a poll of like the most popular discoveries and the one that gets the most uh, votes will make up like a story about it or something. Something stupid, something fun. Right, we ride. We ride the wind. Still nothing. Did I not save in the right place? Did I have to go further above the bistro, maybe? Try this video, it's much easier in visual form. Thank you. 
That sounds good. Let us see the video. Oh, they're really, really small. Holy fuck. Yeah, those are no joke. Those are really hard to see. You gotta go southwest from the bistro. Like, southish, kind of. I, I know what to do now. Wow, no wonder. That's They're really fucking hard to see. See a bottle bleed D. Is that your name? Cash carrying babies. Oh my god, I screwed up again. This is the- this has got to be one of the hardest discoveries. Alright, Gordo's Bistro. We're gonna do this one more time, and we're gonna do it the right way. Gordo's Bistro. Upper Sky face this way. Save. Sorry about this. This is, I mean, getting all the discoveries is definitely a challenge. Okay. Got him. Look at that. <laughs> Look how small they were. You found the flutterflies, a butterfly that travels in groups in search of balloon flower nectar. Their remarkable endurance allows them to cross vast spans without sleeping or resting. Also, the silk produced by their larvae, a larvae is valued for its strength and resilience. Okay, visible, 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 barely visible, not visible. Yo, why is this ship crossing? How is this ship doing this? It's not supposed to be into the sky like this. Okay, then then there's 57, which is um, another upper sky discovery. We're gonna go for that one. I don't know if I got this one already, but number 57.
it starts kind of where the flutterflies are, and then it just kind of... Just goes around in a loop. 57 is the flutterflies. Oh. So then, what's this long one here? What, what, what's 71? Purple stuff. Is that a discovery? I, d I discovered a glitch. Oh, 71's the tricyclone. That one was easy. Alright. Uh, let's see if we can do one more then. One more, one more. Um, I need a list. Where are you getting your list for the numbers? I could do this myself. I don't want to keep bothering you. Thank you. All right, um, let's see what discoveries are left. That's a good idea, actually. Next page. Journal. Discoveries. Four. I'm missing number four. Silver Moon Pit. Head through the reef. Silver Moon Pit is found in the gray rock. All right, let's do number four. Where is number four? I'm looking for it. I see it. Okay. We're close enough to it. I'll just kind of go down the list. It is in here, I believe. Yes, it's in here, and it's right here. I'm surprised I missed this one. I missed a few obvious ones. Uh, am I in the right spot? No, I'm not. More this way. You have found Silver Moon Pit. Only small islands, such as Pirate Island and Shrine Island, lie in the area where the Silver Moon stones fall. So deposits of this large and very hard deposits this large are very hard to come across. Legends say that Silver Moon stones hold the powers of life, but the truth remains unknown. Number five is. see it. It's, uh, east. The reason I love the Discovery so much is just world building. Like, this is how you build a world. spot. Yeah, I yeah. am. Uh, there's one here, too. Number 69 is here. You have found the star sand. In southern Nasser, there was once a desert filled with sand that would sparkle even in the dark of night. But slowly their sparkle faded. Legend has it that someone saved some sand in a giant bottle and hid it for centuries. I like that one. That one's that one's cool. And that is a giant bottle. Let's not make any mistakes about that. Uh, 
to number five is is here. Number five is. You have found the topple rock. A natural formation of three round rocks stacked on top of each other and balanced perfectly. The balance seems delicate, especially when the rocks sway in the wind. But for some reason, they have never toppled. Interesting. Five, six, seven. I need seven. Ten. I'll just do these three from this page. Oh god, there's a lot of, a lot of discoveries left. Okay, so... One, two, three... Seven. Ten. Thirteen. Seven, ten, thirteen. Seven. Well, I know where ten is. Seven is... Can't see it. Number seven. Oh, there it is. Okay, that, that's close by. Seven, ten, and thirteen. I got, I got all three of them. I know where they are. Okay. So number seven is here. Right here. Like, right here. Seven is here. Here, here, here. Is it here? Here. Here it is. You have found the oasis. A shipbuilding... As shipbuilding developed and flight distances grew, the oasis in the middle of the desert lost some of its importance to travelers. But it is still critical to caravans on land routes and remains lively as a center of trade and information. That means that there's like people walking around all over the place on this map and we just can't see them. Okay, we gotta go this way, and then this way. Ten is... kind of... not too bad. Ten is through all this shit. Hurricane Alley over here. The music is losing integrity. Ten is right here. The music can't process all the sound effects and still produce MIDI. This part was cool, but it also kind of sucked because of how many goddamn battles there were. There's also something above here that kind of flies in like a squarish kind of pattern. That's what it says on the map at least, but I can't really find anything at the moment. So let's just see if we can find that discovery. Okay, am I near 10? I am right on top of 10. 10 should be like here. One of these two, perhaps? There it is. You have found the Beak Rock. A natural rock formation sculpted by the constant winds, uh, wind currents of South Ocean. 
Many a sailor's story tells of a giant bird flying south or being attacked by a monstrous beak, but these are likely based on sightings of this rock. <laughs> Again, just brilliant world building. Something this game did tremendously well. It did a few things wrong. Definitely did a few things wrong, but it did a lot of things right, too. It's a fake! Anyone know what that quote is from? If you do, that would be very, very impressive. Some people will get it right away, others will scratch their head, heads forever. Uh, the, the, the amount of wait time in this game, there's a pretty nasty amount of random battles. Those are some things that I, I would gripe about in this game. Instant death, of course. Um, some of it's a bit cliche. Um, but, I, I mean, overall, it is a way more positive. There are more positives about this game than negatives. Rap Bert, you are amazing. You got it. You called it. In the Pale Moon Knight, Star, Star Trek Seep Space Nine. <laughs> you got close. Hanging underneath Ortega, the North Sky. Okay, so this is underneath. Uh, right here. Underneath Ortega. You found the Garpa Fruits. A vined plant that hangs from the bottom of the continent. Its stem contains a powerful hallucinogen. And it's been used for med medicinal and religious purposes through the ages. It is also commonly used in local delicacies. In the Pale Moonlight. That's the episode. It's the episode with uh, the Romulans. And it's, it's a really, really good one. That's the, um, I showed a few of my friends that episode, like people that weren't even into Star Trek, and they, they agreed that it was awesome. Oh boy. Oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, seventeen. I'm gonna do seventeen and eighteen while I'm here. Ixatakan Palace, Ixanus Village. Ixatakan uh, Palace. And XNS Village, since we're here. They should be fairly easy. 17 is directly north of where the Garpa Fruits were. Uh, right here. You have found the Ixitakan Palace. The stone palace was once the site of ceremonies based on an ancient lunar calendar built during the reign of the moon kings. The first, this fir uh, palace, <laughs> this place flourished as the center of Ixitakan civilization for ages, but was destroyed several years ago by the Valuans. Those bastards. You bastards! So, not this island, but this next one, there's there's number 18 on. This one right here. Yeah, 
You have found the Ixenes village. A tribe of women that lives on a small island in Ixataka. They are skilled and fearsome warriors. They raid nearby villages twice a year to quit kidnap men. The numbers of men in nearby tribes have been reduced to almost nothing. Amazing. Take me to the tribe, chief. I want to be there. I have now unlocked the last bounty. Oh boy. Snooky wants smush smush. Alright, I'm done. Let's, uh, let's check out the art. I know this probably wasn't the most exciting stream for some people. You know, especially if you haven't been here for all of the Skies of Arcadia streams. As always, I appreciate you guys spending some time with me. Uh, it's been, it's been good. Now, if you're wondering what the stuff at the top of the page is, on vinesauce.com, you see it says Vine Sauce is offline, Dire Boar is offline, Lime Malicious is offline. Allow me to explain this for a second. Um, the reason is, say a streamer wants to stream a game that has been streamed here already. Or say a streamer wants to stream while someone else is streaming. You can see which streamers are online in their own channels. And you can go there, and it's a link to their Twitch page. So if you're really, you know, not feeling the mainstream, you could head over and watch, you know, Hootie do something else on his own. Now, obviously, they're all going to still stream on the main site quite a bit. But in the event that, say, you know, Dyer mentioned he wants to follow a schedule for some of his streams, he wants to do some certain things at his stream, you know, not all of us are content with kind of, when I say us, I mean, not all of our streamers are 100% content, you know, always streaming on this website because there's nothing to build from in a way. There is, but there also kind of isn't. So say Dyer wants to um, build his own kind of channel in the way he wants to build it. Well, he's still affiliated with Vine Sauce. He still can stream here whenever he wants, and he will. But if you guys want to follow Direbor a little bit and you want to catch his specific streams that he does, say while I'm streaming or Joel is streaming or KY is streaming or whatever, you can go there and, and check that out. Um, this is good for a number of reasons. Um, I feel it's good because it gives streamers a little more freedom. It gives them more of a chance to work on their own streams, their own brand, if they want to, even partnership. Um, it, it gives people the incentive to do things that they want to do still being focused on their own stuff but still being associated with vine sauce um it also could relieve chat congestion i think it could also possibly you know if there's a huge channel um you know people can go and, and check out someone else's stream dire stream and that way the chat gets like a little bit less crazy and then you can come back here later so consider this like a hub in a way um, this isn't going to be used very often, as far as I know. I don't think every streamer is going to be using this every night. But it'll be, you know, once in a while, you'll see some stuff pop up at the top of the page. Um, it's not fully finished yet. Um, the problem is, Dyer's still working on it. Um, he's going to fix up the code. Uh, I don't have my own stream. This is my stream, um, in a way, I guess you could say. So I'll just continue streaming here. Um, this is what I do. I like it here, so so I'm good. Um, and no, it does not mean... It absolutely uh, does not mean that streamers will start moving away from Vine Sauce. Trust me, people are still going to be here. It's just, this is a convenience for other people that want to stream more, but can't because our channel is so congested or because we've already done certain games. So... You know, of course, there's multiplayer possibilities, too.
I'm not unconvinced that half of the where are ex streamer people don't do it on purpose, whether to annoy the chat or because of some grudge against whoever's streaming. Some of them could, yeah, that's a possibility. Um, I think it's pessimist versus optimist argument. I'm kind of like somewhere down the middle. It could be definitely possible, but uh, it is annoying. We all don't like it, and I can tell you that it it is kind of innocent in a way. Like there is, there's no way to tell if someone's brand new to the stream and they just want to see someone stream that they know. It sucks. It can hurt people's like kind of motivation in a way. Like, oh, why the fuck am I streaming if they want to see this guy? But all of us uh, on the streamer team are, are mature enough to handle it for the most part. I think we can all kind of just whatever, no problem. But, um, you know, it's not something that is totally bad in and of itself. It's just annoying. But um, the streamers at the top of that page, uh, I think we're going to probably need more room, meaning the icons might be a little smaller. Um, but these are only the people that have accepted this right now. Like, this is a new thing. So if a streamer doesn't have their own channel and they want to get in on this, they certainly can. But it's just a matter of um, when they accept and when they do it, if they want to do it. It's optional. So we have, it's basically a team, you know, on Twitch. Um, I'll show you guys the page if you're interested. Uh, Twitch has this feature that we've um, we've gotten from them, which basically is this. It's uh, twitch.tv slash team slash vine sauce, and you can see it there. And it basically shows you who's online when. We're all still part of the same team. We all help each other. And there is, even on Twitch, automatically has an association. So it'll say something like Dyer from the Vine Sauce team is streaming on this channel. You know what I mean? There's still definitely something there. And um, I think this is going to be good for us in the long run because, like I said, you know, there's a lot of people here and some people want to kind of work on their own stuff a bit more and not necessarily just do, you know, the stuff on Vine Sauce all the time. So it, it helps. I mean, it'll keep, increase morale and I think it'll be something good for all of us. I'll still be here, but I'm probably, um, someone made the Twitter Vine Sauce Vinny. I was thinking about making my own Twitter just for like personal stuff because the Vine Sauce Twitter is is really um, just for the stream kind of and promotion purposes. But someone actually has Vine Sauce Vinny as to, on Twitter and I don't know how to get in touch with them. And not only that, but like I've emailed Twitter about this to try to resolve this problem and I'm waiting for a response. So that kind of blows. Uh, if any of you know who has that Twitter account, please let me know. So, did, uh, hang on a second. Do we freeze Vinny Vine? So, oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions, excuse me, any other questions? You're skeptical and wary of change, but you're interested in the progression of this idea. Thank you. That's really nice to hear, actually. Um... Anyone streaming next? Probably not. Maybe. I mean, it's really late, but I don't know. Thank you, Mega Mangoes. Maybe I'll make an account there. Um, yeah, I think so. Slad Dog. Are you? You're not TR, are you? Oh, you're okay. You're Vicro mod. Um, yeah, I don't know the Star Citizen stuff. I still haven't figured out yet. Thought I did. I haven't. 
giveaways will happen this week, but not tonight, obviously. Um, alternate names for Twitter, I guess just Vine Sauce Vinny would work best, honestly. Uh, will the other streamers opt in soon? Yep, Joel's already on board. Um, KY is interested in the idea. And I know um, a few other people haven't seen the thread yet. So yeah, we'll probably, I would say most people would be involved. And of course, the, again, this has a lot to do with multiplayer. You can watch some of us play multiplayer. One can stream on one channel, one can stream on another channel. I mean, that's another great idea for what we can do with this system. Um, just to, again, calm any, you know, people's minds about this in case anyone's worried. I don't know why anyone would be. I think this could only be positive. But um, seriously, this does not mean streamers are going to start not streaming here. They definitely will. But it just gives them more freedom and it allows them to build their brand if they want to. If they have the time to do it and they have the energy and effort to put into streaming, all it means is more streams from them. That's it. You'll get maybe extra streams from Dyer, for example, where you can watch some here, you can watch some on his channel. And um, it'll be great. And Anon 5294, the, the most beautiful, pessimistic thing you could ever see. I can see this causing a disaster. You have my word. If it goes south, we will have discussions about this privately. I'm not the type of person that would enjoy watching my stream crumble to the ground. It's probably definitely not going to happen like that. Um, I mean, consider this, again, the place to be. But if you want to see someone stream a little bit more, then you can. So, yeah. Dyer said he's interested in streaming Shovel Knight, for example. If you want to watch uh, Dyer streams Shovel Knight, then... He'll do that on his channel. It's very simple. But if you have any reservations, as always, my email address is in the contact page. Um, you can email me and I will do my best to respond to you. I, I, I really do get to like 98% of my emails at this point, even though I get so many. I do respond to people. If there's an issue you have with the stream... I'm willing to work it out. If you need any kind of um, reassurance about anything, I'm I'm available for that. Only yes, only streams on the main Vine Sauce channel but would be tweeted about. Uh, I would assume other streamers can make their own Twitter uh, if they wanted to, but I think again this main channel, this Vine Sauce channel that we have here, is almost certainly going to be the hub of everything. Things are going to continue as normal here. And if they don't, I will notice. I take very careful notice of these things. And, you know, discussions will be had. Not a big deal. So, I guess that's about it. Um, how many hours does responding to emails take per day? Um... I can answer that. That'll be the last question. Um, from Sukoto, by the way. Would you like some Domingos? Oh, Tyler's going to love this one. Uh, yeah, I. It, it could take a lot of time. Sometimes it only takes maybe a half hour to respond to emails. Sometimes it can take an hour and a half. Um, after the charity stream, it took definitely like two hours. You know, if I don't let it... If I don't get behind... And I don't like, you know, I usually wait three days maximum to respond to someone. Um, just like I said, don't ask to be a streamer. Don't send corruptions. This is from Chinigan, by the way. Um, yeah, if I if it if I tackle the emails I get pretty quickly, then it's not much of a problem. I try not to let it build up because I do want you know people to understand that we're, we're we can talk to you. You know what I mean? Like all the streamers are pretty approachable. If there's a problem. I'll look into it. You know, if you have an issue with the way we do things, we can maybe try to fix it. And, um, you know, if not, if you just want to say hello, I, I could probably spare a minute to say hello. So that's kind of how I do things. 
Um, and of course, you know, we're working on a better system for unbans. Um, we that will be revealed soon. Uh, it's not happening right this minute. So at the moment, if people ask me to get them unbanned, I usually do a little research and try my best. Um, talk to some streamers and stuff. But soon we're going to have a much better system to get people unbanned. And uh, it'll be integrated more with the report system too. So uh, remember guys, there's always the report system. And we do check it very, very um, frequently. So... Anyway, from Chinigan, um, this there's this comic here that I haven't read, so let me take a look at this. It's uh, no smoking on deck. It's not. Then why is it smoky? It's a lollipop. I'm just licking it so fast. Bullshit. How do you? No gag. <laughs> Reflex. I deep throat. Well, God damn it, Chinigan. What is this? The smut you bring to my stream. Uh, Brahmin Krip from Matthew the Dark. You are correct, actually. And here's another one. From Sergeant. Brahmin creep. Literal. Actual Brahmins from Fallout in, in a fucking crepe. From C. Uh, I come to deliver candy. Not bees. Not at all. Totally not bees. <laughs> That's how I opened the stream if you missed it. From uh, Garagiz. Well, at least the purple chicken thing survived. Sorry about the bad art. I haven't uh, got much MS Paint practice. That's okay. You, you tried. You put effort into it. That's all I can really say. I appreciate it. From Matthew the Dark, expand dunk. Your references are out of control. You know that? Like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> ah, we got these uh, deers, right? What's it doing? Knocking about. Kicking. Promple. Giving him quid people giving him quid just get rid of him he's got a head like a fucking orange this is by uh zeta the red i thought it said promple uh i don't know why but yeah zeta the red that's perfect that is exactly what carl would say from assassin rain the same person that made me that cthulhu uh figure out of clay and it's not completely done yet but that's what she says um, you wanted to show the progress. This is 1A from the Animal Crossing Corruptions. Remember, I totally streamed that. Uh, and that is beautiful. That is awesome. I still love 1A. I think that's one of the best things that ever came from a corruption. Just total perfect creepiness. I want to hold your gland. Fuck this. Vain sus... Uh, Sprux, why you do this? From... Um, Sakoto, quick Sakoto, kill them. But who is the real vine sauce? Are you fucking serious with this shit? Vine snoss, Canadian vine sauce, pine sauce. Yo, these clone things have to stop. Seriously, guys, they're not funny anymore. Stop it. Oh, fucking hell. From C. It was funny at first, I will admit. I did have a good laugh about it for a bit, but now it's just getting, like, cringeworthy. Um, I would like living somewhere hot. The sun is hot, Vinny's house. Did I say that? I would like living somewhere hot? Is this confirmation? Seriously, do, did I really say that? Because that is... Wow. Just words... Uh, from Moth Bride, Jojel. From Amorphous Light, Vinny. I did say it. I said it exactly like that. Okay. That's good. I don't even remember things I said 15 minutes ago. Um, too Much Salt from Cheesy. All right. Well, that's uh, that's the end of my stream. I think that covers everything. Um uh, pretty sure that's all the art from my streams today and i appreciate once again you guys uh watching appreciate you guys being here um even if the chat must be hidden oh wait who drew this uh i missed chinigan's art who the hell is sending packages at 9 a.m it was bees it's always bees 
I know, again, I know Skies isn't for everyone, but I like to kind of just take it easy every now and then. I, I, I definitely enjoy any kind of stream, but sometimes I like to just tone it down, do a nice story, story time with Vinny, you know, just kind of have you guys relax a bit. And uh, therefore, I will never forget this Skies of Arcadia stream. I really am loving it. I'm loving every minute of it. It's been it's been an adventure and we're still you know not quite done yet. We've got a little bit more adventuring to go. So more skies soon. We'll finish this soon. Start up Zelda and a new adventure awaits. It's not about the destination, my friends. It's about the journey. It's about how you enjoy yourself while you're on the journey. Okay. See, this is this is like Vinny needing to go to sleep. So I'm going to go do that now. And you guys take care and have a fantastic night. And I'll see you soon. Later. <laughs>